Hello, in this video we're going to talk about Paget's disease of the bone. This condition is actually a disorder of bone remodeling, where there is an increase in bone turnover. What this means is that in the bone there is increased bone breakdown, followed by increase in bone formation. And this results in areas of bony enlargement and deformity. Let's talk about some physiology. There are two important cells in the bone. The ones that break down bone, termed osteoclast, and the ones that build new bone, called osteoblasts. Both normally work together in harmony to maintain bone structure and strength. The bone formed will eventually become strong lamella bone, which is a highly organized structure with circular layers of collagen alternating with longitudinal layers of collagen. In Paget's disease, there are a few things that are found. Firstly, there is an increase in number and activity of osteoclasts, the bone breaking cells. Osteoclasts in Paget's disease are much larger, with a greater number of nuclei, up to 100 as compared to 3 or 5 that is found in normal osteoclasts, so a significantly higher number of nuclei. These large osteoclasts are more sensitive to vitamin D. They are more responsive to rank ligand, which is expressed by osteoblasts to help stimulate osteoclasts. And also, they express anti-apoptotic genes, which means that they are less likely to die quicker. All these factors cause osteoclastic activity to be increased in Paget's disease of the bone. Bone breakdown is then followed by bone formation, which leads to the bone enlargement and deforming looking bones. Focusing more on the pathophysiology, the bony changes seen in Paget's disease can be divided into three phases. The first phase is the osteolytic phase, followed by the mixed phase, and finally the sclerotic phase. In the initial osteolytic phase, there is a lot of bone resorption, bone breakdown by osteoclasts. And this also causes increase in blood flow to the area, called hypervascularization. Osteolytic phase is then followed by mixed phase. In the mixed phase, there is a mix of both active bone resorption and bone formation that really replaces the normal lamellar bone with haphazard woven bone. The bones that are being formed are essentially weak. Remember, the normal lamellar bone, the bone is mature, normally highly organized and strong. In contrast, the woven bone that is being produced in these osteoblasts is actually composed of loosely and randomly arranged collagen bundles. The woven bone is weaker than normal lamellar bone. The final phase is a sclerotic phase. Here you have a decrease in bone resorption and an increase in osteoblastic activity. In the sclerotic phase, the osteoblasts forms hard, dense, less vascular bone. The sclerotic phase is also known as the burnt out phase of Paget's disease. Here is a picture of a bone that highlights the different phases of Paget's disease. On the left you have the lytic phase where the bone appears very brittle, there's more breakdown, and then as it progresses you get the sclerotic phase where you get bone formation and the bone itself has increased in size and density. Now this abnormal structure will actually weaken the bone and despite the bones being enlarged because of the increase in osteoblastic activity, there is an increased risk of fractures. All these three phases may be present at the same time at different skeletal sites, meaning you can have osteolytic phase on one bone and you can have a sclerotic phase affecting a completely different bone. Paget's disease can occur in more than one bone location. 
The skeletocytes most commonly involved are the skull, spine, pelvis, and lower extremities, such as the tibia. People with Paget's disease of the bone are normally asymptomatic. They have no symptoms. Majority is actually identified, incidentally, with a blood test which shows an elevation of something called ALP, which is a marker of bone turnover. Otherwise, patients may also complain of symptoms such as pain, pain in the joints, osteoarthritis. They have an increased risk of fractures. They can have disabling deformities of the bone. And the bone itself that enlarges can compress against nerve, causing a variety of symptoms. The bone enlargement especially can cause a lot of complications. Paget's disease affecting the tibia or the femur, for example, can cause bowing of the actual bone. There's something called vascular steel syndrome, which is essentially a myelopathy where the bone, when it's highly vascularized, it gets all this blood flow and steals the blood from elsewhere because it's very active. And so it can cause a lot of issues. For example, it can steal blood supply from the nerves, causing some form of neuropathy or myelopathy. Also, it can result in high output heart failure because all the bone is stealing the blood. As a result, the heart works faster and harder. Periodontal complication is a result of Paget's disease affecting the mandible or the maxilla, the bones in the face. Paget's disease affecting bones in the inner ear and middle ear can result in progressive hearing loss. And there's an increase of osteosarcoma in Paget's disease, which is essentially cancer of the bone. Risk factors for developing Paget's disease include an increase in age, slightly more dominant in males. One third of cases have a genetic component to it, where you have an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. The gene affected most commonly is something called sequestosome 1 gene. Classical environmental factors have also been associated with Paget's disease, including paramyxovirus and having a rural lifestyle. Investigations in Paget's disease, importantly, are the bone turnover markers, which will be increased. We talked about ALP, which is alkaline phosphatase. Interestingly, calcium levels are normal. You can also check the urine for hydroxyproline, which may be increased in people with Paget's, which indicates increase in bone lysis or breakdown. Plain radiograph x-rays is very useful. And depending on the phase of the Paget's disease, you can see different things. For example, in the lytic phase, as shown in this x-ray of the femur, you can see lytic lesions. Radiographically, this manifests as lytic wedge or blade of grass lesion. In the mixed phase, you can see both lytic lesions and sclerotic lesions. Sclerotic lesions, as shown in this x-ray, you can see thickened cortical bone because of the building of the bone. You can see coarse and thickened trabeculae and also in sclerotic phase, you can get bony enlargement and deformity because of the increase in osteoblastic activity. Another type of scan, a bone scan, is also very useful and is performed in people who have Paget's disease to see if there's any active disease. Treatment of Paget's disease include anti-resorptive therapy, such as bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates work by inhibiting osteoclastic activity, so reducing bone resorption. Bisphosphonates work by laying themselves down on bone, and then they allow themselves to be absorbed by the osteoclast and really induce apoptosis, so osteoclast cell death. Treatment also importantly consists of monitoring and managing the complications associated with Paget's disease. So in summary, Paget's disease of the bone is a disorder of bone remodeling with an increase in bone turnover. It can be distinctly divided into three phases, osteolytic, mixed, and sclerotic phases. Treatment is bisphosphonates. Thank you for watching.